Yeah, it was back in the summer of 2018. I was actually in some of the best shape of my life. And then I was starting to feel some really sharp pains in like my shoulder, my back, and we just didn't know what was going on. We were in and out of doctor's offices and just trying to figure out what was going on. I even took a leukemia blood test and it came back negative. So then after some other further tests, we get a call. Turns out it was leukemia. The first thing I did was I called my sister. And then when she answered the phone and I told her, and yet I, I was still processing everything. I, I don't think my emotions really caught up. And then she started crying and the next day you know, my emotions went and I was just like, it all just like sunk. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is my new normal, you know? I knew that leukemia was gonna be a tough road ahead. I don't think I was fully prepared on what the next three years of my life was gonna look like, but I knew it was gonna be a hard battle for sure. I was homebound, so I had to just finish my junior year at home, which was hard because all my friends and my immune system was so low, I wasn't even able to see them. And so my whole, pretty much when I was 17, I never was 17 or 16 in my life. Like those years were just, it was just a blur and it was just going through treatment. So I think it was about three weeks into my intense treatment, I uh, had a reaction to a medication and it caused a stroke and I pretty much, the whole right side of my face was just like pretty much immovable. And uh, it was definitely traumatizing for sure. I didn't remember a lot of stuff. I remember the ER ride over to the hospital and I was finally getting conscious. And I was like, man, I've been going to the hospital a lot. Like what's happening? And I remember I asked like one of the EMTs that was in the back of the ambulance with me. I was like, like what, what am I doing? Like well, how come I've been in the hospital so often? He's like, oh, you have, you have cancer. And I didn't even remember that. And so it was like getting re-diagnosed again. And so that was traumatizing, especially for my family who was around me when I actually had a seizure that you know, showed that I had the stroke. And so overcoming that was hard. I had to relearn how to like move my right hand and my whole right side of my body. And it was really close to an artery in my brain that could have been life-changing. Another roadblock that I had is something called uh, methotrexate toxicity. And that also had a similar thing, but the left side of my brain I had a reaction to. So I got both, both sides, you know. And uh, with that, it paralyzed the left side of my body. And it was not as intense as the stroke, but still, like, I would be in the hospital, I'd be like, all right, doctor, my leg's gonna freeze up. And then next thing you know, my, my rib cage is gonna start to curl. And it would be like in this sequence of like paralyzing my body. And so, it's scary being in those things because you don't know if you're actually going to get out of them. The end of my maintenance phase not too long ago and I was I got COVID and I really didn't show signs for like seven days and I was like all right this is gonna be a cakewalk after everything I've been through you know how hard is this gonna be but since my immune system so lowered from all the treatment and chemo that I take uh, it took me two months to get over COVID and I actually had to go because of uh, protocol, I had to go to the emergency room five times in those two months. I lost about 35 pounds and I literally for most of the duration of that time, it was a struggle to just get out of bed. Like I just didn't have energy. Usually people have lung problems and yeah, I had coughs and you know, typical COVID stuff. But my energy was so low that it was a chore to go downstairs and like just do normal things. And that was just a struggle. And it really kind of almost brought me back to when I was first diagnosed. It wasn't as bad, but those memories of just like not being able to do anything. And it's like, man, I was so close to the finish line. Is this really the thing that's going to hinder me back from ringing my bell? But thankfully, I overcame it and uh, was on to the next challenge. I had a lot of free time, and which provoked a lot of thoughts. And I would be lying if I said all those thoughts were positive. You know, there's definitely times where you just, I would just be laying down and it's like, man, like, why can't I just be normal? Like, why can't, why can't I just have this normal life that I had just, just a little while ago? But then, re-encouraging thoughts will happen. Man, I'm overcoming this. I'm the one that's pursuing and gonna one day ring that bell. There's gonna be a future and an end to this. And so, yeah, that's, my soul definitely, it hurt a lot. You know, there was a lot of pain. And especially, you know, I was pretty strong, but seeing my parents, seeing me go through this, they were seeing their little kids struggle through all this, and that was, that was hard for sure. God was literally is the one constant that stayed the entire part of my journey. He is the one with un unwavering love, and uh, I had all these roadblocks, all the reactions that I had to the chemos. 
I was like the 1% of the 1% and usually they don't survive. And God allowed me to survive. And so then I can tell my story. It gave me more time to read the Bible and really understand why this happened to me. Cause like, I think that's kind of another struggle that I had was like, why did this happen to me? Why did God choose me to go through this? And I'm actually glad it didn't happen to anyone else but me. Through this, I've learned more about him than I think I would have ever had. I'm closer to him. I, you know, now am teaching my boys at my life group, and I use things that I went through in my journey to then teach them. So there's a reason why God had me in this, and uh, it's to proclaim his name. I think I've had so many prayers in the past three and a half years, and I seriously, genuinely feel them. The presence that I've had from the whole church body has literally been overwhelming with stuff and heck, going into Sunday service, people come at me and it's like, I've been praying for you. And then especially my 242 group, they were, they were rock solid through all of it. They were giving me encouraging texts and telling me how much they were loving me and praying for me. And yeah, I just couldn't thank them enough. I oftentimes could overthink prayer and it's the one way you can communicate with God. And it's just, if you pray through things, God will open your doors and open your eyes to, oh my gosh, sometimes you can look really closely into things and not actually see the bigger picture. And it's like, oh, this little struggle right here in the big grand scheme of things, if I just overcome this, you know, I can unlock many things in your life. When I first got diagnosed, it's like, okay, this is our roadmap and it's time to conquer it. And I never really saw the end of the road. It was always just like, all right, next treatment, next treatment, let's get over it. You know, let's conquer this. And then now that it's finished, it's just like, wow, I can breathe. It's just, it's crazy the relief I've had. And like, even in this past month where I've not had to have any treatment, I just feel like a totally different person. I'm like, I can't believe I was doing the stuff I did back then when I feel now. I have more energy. I feel like my senses are heightened. I'm not getting tired as easily, and I just overall, I'm just, I'm happy it's over.